Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel for our Saturday craft day with Craft Galley. We're going to be pulling out the Ulta New World Map stamp set again and having a little bit of fun with that with some watercoloring. So a while back I used this stamp and I was doing some foiling with it and I had mentioned that I would love to come back and do watercoloring and so here we are today we're gonna have a good time this stamp is amazing I'm all things maps lately <laughs> I'm really into the maps okay so let's get into the card here I am going to be stamping out both of these maps on some watercolor cardstock this is Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock and I'm gonna be embossing so I'm using some VersaFine or sorry VersaMark um, ink. It's a very sticky ink and it's clear and it's going to allow my embossing powder to stick to it so we are going to be doing that. I'll be first using gold and white embossing powder for these first two cards. So off to the right here you are going to see a little piece of plastic there. So while I'm doing all this business I'll tell you what that is. That piece of plastic is from the Dollar Tree. It is from a large cutting mat. They're come, they come two to a pack. I think they're larger than 11 by 14 if I'm guessing. And I cut those down and then rounded the corners. And I used those for our On The Make event that we had recently down in North Carolina. Put one in everybody's bag so that they can have a little palette to watercolor on. And so I find it very useful. Uh, it's travel size. You can just have it with you. Um, and if you don't have any type of slick surface like that to paint on, I would highly recommend it because it's super cheap. So, I, listen, I don't even want to try to do public math, but if I threw a number out there, I'm guessing maybe eight cents each. <laughs> maybe. I got six from one of those sheets. There's two to a pack. You go ahead and do that math. Okay. So, I am taking the colors that I most want to use for my painting here and the the whole premise behind these cards is basically making cards with ease that would that should be the subject of this card video right here because heat embossing simple and magical by the way uh, and then watercoloring you just are basically tossing down some color on there whatever colors suit you and so I change it up a little bit from the next card but that's what you should be doing. You should be having fun and I am going to encourage you to do that. If watercoloring frightens you as it does me or it's lessening a little bit with that, um, start with doing this. Maybe you don't have to do the perfect shading um, of images and watercoloring like some of those experts do just yet. But you got to start somewhere. So let's start with spraying our paper to get a wet on wet technique and dropping in some color. And then the emboss resist part is just icing on the cake because then you can start to see your image emerge underneath. So whatever image you're using, you can start to see that come to life, which I think is so fun. So here I'm using a mix of yellow and blue to make green. I thought that was a lot of fun. I have made a few cards for my friend who's in Florida and they're all with this color theme because that's her favorite. And so I walked into her office one day and saw that she had them displayed, which I thought was so sweet. So now I'm going to keep giving her these, <laughs> these themed cards so she could have sort of like it all works together, you know? Part of her office will be decor from me. That's the hope. Okay, so then I go back here and I want to add a little bit more color. I did heat set that because I didn't want to have to keep wiping up my palette there and then going to switch into the other one. So I just heat set it to hurry it up along and I'm going back in with some color. So I don't know if the lighting's any better in this video, but I have moved my craft space from the corner upstairs on the main floor to our basement. And it's a walkout basement, so it's not totally all submerged underground. Um, but there's overhead lighting down here, which there is not in the upstairs, which I find fascinating. The living room has no overhead lighting. It's a house from 1972, so okay, I guess they didn't see the need for electricity back in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, I can't say that too much because I'm not far off from a 70s baby. Um, but anyway... They, I moved downstairs, and if you follow me on Instagram, I have something on the stories in the highlights of my kind of where I moved from and where I'm moving to. Okay, to the card real quick. I am ink smushing on the card stock here, and I'm picking up some of this ink. I don't like to waste it, but of course, I use more when I don't want to waste because I add 
Anyway, um, I'm loving the way this is coming out. This, at first glance, I was like, I don't know, we'll see. When it dried back, holy moly guacamole. Loving it. So they're up there. Um, you can see the two on the left are the ones where I did like the ink smushing technique. Okay, let's move on to the sentiment here. I'm heat embossing this sentiment onto black cardstock using white embossing powder. First, must use anti-static powder bag. You can see all that powder on the black cardstock. That'll go away because we're going to wipe it up with a microfiber cloth in a minute. But I'm just going to move my paper up, get this all stamped and heat embossed. Okay, back to my craft room. So I moved down. My husband built me this incredible island for the center. I have so much more space. I can kind of spread out a little bit. I want to stand when I craft now um, more unless I'm coloring. And so I've I'm loving that. That is just, I feel more productive. I get things done faster. I'm moving around. Uh, so it's just, it's really helpful. And then when I want to sit, I'll sit because I have a desk for that. Um, but I did something on my Instagram highlights. Told you about that. If you want to go check that out, I'm still in the process. I update it every time I do something new. The room is coming together. It's not near done. Uh, well, it is near done. It's not done. <laughs> but um, And then I plan on doing a craft room tour if anyone is interested in that. So um, that would be a lot of fun. I'll probably try to do that in the next couple months. For the sentiment, I am going to bubble cut it out because I felt like a square might just be take up too much real estate on this panel, and that's not what I wanted to do. So I am going to um, use that for my sentiment, and then I'm going to cut down my panels just a little bit. This is more organic than the other one with the coloring, but the ones that have the harsh white line, I definitely want to get rid of that because that was from the paint um, painter's tape that I used to hold down my, my project. All right, so now I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put sentiments, how I want this to roll. Um, I kind of switched it up from down in the lower right hand corner to the center of the projects. Um, and I'm happy with that. I really like the way that that came out. I didn't want to keep covering the same parts of the map um, and just for something different. Also, a center highlight is nice. Um, for the sentiment. Okay, so here I used some silver embossing powder. I went and re-stamped and put powder over them. I used gold and silver for the last two, and that was doing it after the color. And that's fine to do. You just got to make sure your panel is super duper dry because if there's any dampness to it, your embossing powder is going to stick all over it. So just be careful of that. Score tool to score my 110 pound cardstock. Then some art glitter glue to put down my panels. Did you see I checked it was the right way? It's facing the right way. Last video, not so much. Okay, so I get this down. I'm going to put something heavy on it because it is watercolor cardstock. It warped a little bit. And so I just want to make sure that this is lays flat. I had to do that actually after all was said and done overnight just to kind of flatten them out completely. Um, and that worked just fine. And here you can see my placement. Okay, so I asked Adia which one of these was her favorite. She said, which one's your favorite? I said, on the count of three, let's point to our favorite. And then one, two, three, it was this one right here. We both pointed to this one. Um, we must have similar taste. I just really like the silver on that those colors. I thought that was really pretty. And so that finishes up the, that part of the card. The last thing that we're gonna do is add some of the shimmer spritz off camera. Um, I just got to spray it, let it mist over, and it gives this really pretty pearlescent look. Uh, not so much sparkles like glitter, but more pearlescent. And I'm going to try to show you up close if you can kind of see that. It's hard to see on camera, really. It doesn't do it justice. Okay, and that's it. That'll bring us to the end of this video and these cards. Hopefully, it's inspired you to just have some fun Um Pick an easy technique that you can make multiple cards with. I'm kind of on that kick lately because um, I feel like I want to have more cards to send out, but uh, the intricacies of some of the techniques kind of takes a little bit of time. So this has been really fun for me lately to do. I will list what I use below in the description box. Don't forget to head over to Craft Galley. Check out what she has in store. Always great stuff and great, great prices that she has over there. And until next time, we hope you have a fantastic week. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Here are two more videos you might be interested in. One using the same stamp set but with a foil technique and the other using the same technique of simple watercoloring for multiple cards.